a lot of people ask me as a previous registered nurse why I would choose a specialty that was not directly patient facing. Hey, it's Lily. I was planning to do a, another week in my life as I start my very last VA medicine rotation. It's my last words rotation in my intern year. I'm actually still technically on call. When we work at the VA, we work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And even though I left today at noon, I'm still responsible for all of the nurse calls until 7 p.m. So this phone might ring during this recording. But obviously I'm here doing a talking head video because I did not end up recording anything at the beginning of this week. I had such an emotional week coming back from Ohio as the reality of my moving there for my advanced radiology residency is setting in. I basically was crying almost every single day on my way to work just because the reality of moving away from my family across the country is starting to set in and I was just struggling to accept that in the beginning of this week. But I'm in a much better place now. I feel a lot better and I want to record a video to kind of help me reflect on why I chose diagnostic radiology and why I think it's such a great medical specialty. I want to first address the common misconceptions about radiologists. People often think that radiologists don't interact with people at all. To an extent, radiologists don't interact with as many people as say a hospitalist or say a psychiatrist whose job is really to do a lot of patient facing direct patient contact. But radiologists do frequently collaborate with other physicians and other healthcare personnel. When I was doing my surgical rotation in my the first part of my intern year, we would do something called CT rounds. So when we would go run the list with the surgeon, that means like going through each patient and discussing them. We would mark patients that we would want to discuss the CT with the diagnostic radiologist just so that the surgeon can plan their surgery. And we would call those CT rounds. And as a surgical team, we went into radiology and interacted with the radiologist on a daily basis. I love that about my surgical rotation. And I think that frequently happens throughout hospital systems. Although radiologists are not directly involved in patient care, their interpretations impact nearly every single patient in every specialty. If you think about a radiologist's workflow, they're reading hundreds of scans per day. Think of how many patients that are impacting, the care that they're impacting. You cannot impact more care than a radiologist can in one day just because of the amount and volume of, of studies that they're going through of different patients. I don't know if you've heard of this, but radiologists are often considered a doctor's doctor because they're often the consultants to other doctors. You have to know your radiology and anatomy better than a surgeon does if you ever want to actually offer them something useful. So being a radiologist requires that you know your craft very well so that you can offer useful information to other physicians as a consultant. The other common misconception is that people think radiologists aren't real doctors, but I think that that's a common misconception for a lot of different specialties, including psychiatry, which was my original specialty that I chose prior to switching to diagnostic radiology. But radiologists are board certified physicians. They have gone through medical school, five years of residency training, and then an additional one to two years of fellowship training. They diagnose and treat patients, countless patients on a daily basis. And they often are handling high volumes of cases, reading hundreds of images, like I said earlier, and doing tons of procedures throughout the day. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little more comfortable. Another thing I hear a lot is that radiologists are all introverts. Well, I think that radiology really suits introverts. Like I would say that I'm an introvert, but I don't think that's a requirement to be a successful radiologist. I think what it really does is attracts individuals who have like a strong interest in diagnosis and going through differentials, as well as people with a continuous love for learning, regardless of their personality type. Another misconception that originally deterred me was that I thought you had to love tech or like be into gaming. The field is like dominated by men. It's like 75% men. And I've always imagined it's just like a guy who loves gaming, who like, pushes up his glasses and sits in a dark room and doesn't want to interact with anyone. You know, when you think of that as a typical radiologist, people like me might be deterred to go into a field like that because we can't see ourselves in it, right? I think that having familiarity with tech is very useful, but definitely not essential. Because of the fact that we're on the computer most of the day, I think ergonomics is an important aspect and allows for efficiency in our work. But I don't think you need to be a gamer or a programmer to thrive in radiology. When I ended up choosing diagnostic radiology, it wasn't until my fourth year of medical school. So typically people are not choosing their medical specialties that late 
because by the time that you're in your fourth year, you'd want to already have your rotation set up as well as your letters of recommendation set up. And you're starting to now work on your ERAS application for residency. ERAS was due in September. I chose to do diagnostic radiology in July. I had to scramble and get a diagnostic radiology rotation in August, the month before ERAS was due. And what I really want to talk about right now is why is it that people decide diagnostic radiology so late or why people don't choose it at all? And I think it's because medical students are often not exposed to diagnostic radiology early enough in their medical school training. I definitely wasn't. What I learned about diagnostic radiology in medical school was like a two hour Zoom information session. And to be honest, I was not even paying attention to most of it. I think it's a specialty that is underrepresented in medical school, which can be really discouraging for people who are trying to look into going into this field. Now let's talk about why I chose diagnostic radiology. In medicine, we image just about everyone. Anyone coming in with stomach ache, chest pain, cough, we're imaging them. We're getting a chest x-ray, we're getting an abdominal x-ray, CT scans. And what I've learned is that imaging could really drastically change the entire course of a patient's admission or course of treatment. There was an especially prominent moment in my third year of medical school when a patient came in sick with what she thought was the flu. She went to urgent care, she was treated for the flu, but she was an immunocompromised patient, meaning that she is particularly at risk for being critically ill if she got a severe infection. After going and getting treatment at urgent care, she wasn't feeling any better, so she went to our emergency room. We did a full pan scan of her body, a CT scan of her entire body, and found that she had multiple abscesses or collections of fluid and pus all over her body. And we ended up diagnosing her with a rare bacterial infection. And she had to get admitted, she had to get interventional radiology, had to drain a bunch of these fluid pockets, uh, pus pockets, and we had to treat her with antibiotics. But just imagine if we had not imaged her, we wouldn't have known that all of this hidden infection was happening all over her body. And how would we have gotten to all of those pockets, right? Ultimately with her, imaging changed the entire course of her care as well as probably saved her life. I loved how imaging basically stitched together all of these specialties with surgery, interventional radiology, infectious disease, and our medicine team Every time that we would discuss things together, we would pull up the images and discuss the patient kind of in that context. And it just warmed my heart that radiology was kind of like the stitch that brought all of these specialties together. Her case was one of the many examples of how imperative image guidance is in patient care as well as diagnosis and really reinforced my pursuit of this specialty. I love the opportunity to do procedures. My original plan was to do psychiatry, but I ended up not doing that because I loved procedures so much and I just felt like I had to do a specialty that would allow me to continue doing procedures. Even if I decide to not do it in the, for the rest of my career, I do feel like I need to be able to have the option to do procedures. So psychiatry just wasn't going to be the option. Of course, we can't talk about diagnostic radiology without talking about the work-life balance. Even in residency training, diagnostic radiology tends to be less demanding. In my first six months of my advanced radiology residency, once I start in July, I will not have to work a single weekend and I won't be working any holidays. Compared to my current intern year, I'm working six days a week. I'm working through the weekend this weekend. I work all of next weekend and often am working holidays. Of course, as a radiology attending, I can choose to have whatever schedule I want. Some people do things like live in Hawaii and read for the East Coast during the day, but they're reading their night imaging. So they're kind of nocturnous, but they're reading during the day, if that makes sense. I'm also very task oriented and I love making lists. I love to-do lists. So the workflow of radiology really suits my personality because there's constantly a list to be read and you read one image at a time. You don't have like 49 patients that you're seeing on a floor. You just have one image that you're seeing one at a time. And when you're done with one, it falls off your list and you go to your next one. I love a workflow like that. One thing at a time, that task is complete and I move on to the next task. I think part of loving your job is also loving the workflow of your job. And what I've learned is that I don't like physical exams. I don't like pharmacology. I don't like prescribing medications and I don't like managing medications. I especially don't like titrating insulin for patients. I can't wait to not do any of these things anymore when I become a radiologist. Obviously, when I learned the things that I don't like, it gets rid of certain specialties like 
being a hospitalist, internal medicine, family medicine. I don't want to manage medications. I don't have to do that as a radiologist. I just feel like radiology encompasses all of the great things about learning medicine without any of the bull crap that is involved in healthcare. I loathe managing social issues. I loathe dispoing a patient, trying to figure out where they can go to safely discharge. I get that it's all necessary. I get that, but it doesn't mean that I enjoy doing it and I don't wanna ever do it again. The next three weeks are my last weeks on wards ever. I'll never have to do wards again. I'll never have to round on patients. I'll never have to do another full head to toe physical exam. I don't wanna do another neuro exam. I don't want to prescribe medications. I'm just so excited. I'm just so excited to start on July 1st and finally do what I applied to residency to do. Talk about lifelong learning. I want to learn and be a student for the rest of my life, honestly. And being a radiologist means that you need to keep up with all all of the new emerging diseases. You need to be able to keep up with all of the changes in imaging, as well as learn how to incorporate all of the new artificial intelligence tools into your workflow. That's the thing about diagnostic radiology is it will always push me to learn. And that part of it is so fulfilling to me. I want a career that will continue to push me to grow and challenge me. And I honestly did not think any other specialty could do that besides diagnostic radiology. All right, sorry if this video was super mumbo jumbo. I kind of had a lot of issues trying to record it, just like saying things over and over because I could not get my words out. Part of it is just working so much, but I just wanted to share all of the great things about radiology. A lot of people asked me as a previous registered nurse why I would choose a specialty that was not directly patient facing, but there's so many things to love about diagnostic radiology that I could not at least try to match into this specialty. It has become more competitive, but I do think that because people are afraid of AI taking over, people are not applying as much to this specialty, which is a shame, honestly. But that just means that if you're interested in applying to diagnostic radiology, you might have a higher chance of matching into it. Well, I hope this video gave you some insight as to why I chose diagnostic radiology, why I'm super excited to start residency in radiology in my advanced specialty in July, and encourage you to go into diagnostic radiology as well. Let me know if you have any questions about this specialty. We are probably like five or six weeks away from our move, so the next couple of weeks will be decluttering and trying to get some stuff packed into boxes and my life together so that we can move across the country. I am hoping to do a mini moving series where I discuss the cost of moving for residency and all of the resources that I use to move. So I hope that you guys will find that interesting. And of course, I will continue vlogging as I go through radiology residency. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.